So today, um, what I've prepared for you is uh, some actual um, start to finish wave counting. And, um, and so I've put up a, a chart that has no wave labels on it. This happens to be the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a um, very popular item for uh, Elliott Wave uh, newbies to start the um, counting and developing their wave counts on it. And one of the reasons is because there's so much uh, data going way back on it. Um, <clears throat> this chart uh, starts back in the year 1900 <clears throat> and the Dow Jones Industrial Average <clears throat> actually started into existence in 1896. So this chart really isn't missing hardly any data at all. Um, uh, and so we, we, what we have is the price action on a similar chart. So what I'm going to do today is, uh, I'm going to talk about how to start labeling waves, how to get started on it. And, uh, this, um, uh, on screen on chart list would be uh, the way I would do it, and it is it is the way I started um, counting waves uh, some decades ago. Um, first thing you need to do is read the first 100 page, pages of Elliott Wave Principle, Principle by Frost and Prechter, and uh, you'll want to do that, um, I think, three times in, in quick succession. succession. And the reason is because uh, it, it'll just sink in a lot better for you. So if you don't have a, that book, you can uh, receive free access to it by going to my site, going to the bottom of any screen on my site or at my blog and clicking right here. And that will take you directly to the book. It's the, the entire book is right here for you to read including uh, the sections and this um, is the basically the foundational um, rules and guidelines of uh, the Elliott Wave principle. Now um, that being said, um, I think uh, there's uh, once you read those um, first hundred pages of that book, uh, there's other materials available at my site under the resources tab. So you go to resources tab and hit guides. And um, the, the very second guide here, the guides are basically documents I've written about different things. And then I've had some guests uh, that have written some educational documents that are all you know, in a collection here. But this is guide number two, Elliott Wave explained an outline of the wave principle is there at my side all the time. And it is more of about a 10 page document where I, I took the entire wave principle and built it into an outline. No extra, no extra words here. So you can very quickly um, look at the basic rules and guidelines how uh, definition of an impulse wave, typical Fibonacci relationships, uh, definitions of several different kinds of corrective waves, all the different kinds, um, and uh, guidelines, a number of guidelines, how to draw uh, LA wave trend channels. And that's all in a very short, about 10 page document. And I think that would make a really good um, uh, place once you've, gotten the basic idea down by reading the first hundred pages of Elliott Wave principle, you go to that uh, outline and uh, check for very quickly for a list of typical Fibonacci relationships between uh, waves and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, my long-term count on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and this is a quarterly chart, I show this every week in my weekly counts webinar. I start with this slide every every week and then quickly move through. But this is my long-term count on Dow Jones Industrial Average. And since we only have data back to 1900, my main count is that we have wave one at the uh, September 1929 high. Wave two in 1932, that was a about a 90% crash. 
um, that happened in just a, a three year period. A wave three at super cycle degree, that's at olive color. At the 2000 high, wave four, super cycle wave four at the 2009 low. And then a five wave up structure, either complete or very, very nearly complete up from that 2009 low. Now, you might look at this, there's a lot of information on here. There's Fibonacci targets and things. You might say, well, how and would I start, how would I develop such a roadmap? And um, the best way is to, uh, and you go to this list right here, um, and, and it'll tell you to start with a professional's long-term wave count and move to smaller time frames from there adding smaller degree labels and Fibonacci targets as you go. So we're, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do that for you live on live candles. Okay. Um, so um, the, the first rule I have about the long-term charts is you must, absolutely must use Similog charts. Here's what this chart would look like on a regular uh, linear scale. You wouldn't even be able to see any of the waves or any of the price action until you got past 1982. And then it, you know, it's, it would be very difficult to label the waves here. And so on the longer term chart that you're using, like quarterly, quarterly, you definitely want to use a Similog scale. Here's the other really important thing uh, on using Similog charts and, and is notice that down at the very start of this chart, like in 1903, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was $30.88. 30. It was at 30. Today, right this second, said it's at 27,000. So um, what this does is it figures a percentage uh, of movement as it moves along and allows you to actually see and label uh, the waves and you'll notice that it's the further up in the price scale you get, the closer together these numbers get. So it really at 27,000, as far as on this quarterly chart, it doesn't look like 50,000 is really that far away. Um, but, um, and so the, the numbers get, um, the increments get closer and closer uh, uh, on the scale as you move along. But here's the real important thing about using Similog charts. Um, if I were, I've got some Fibonacci price targets uh, on this um, and what it did. So what I did, and I'll just draw a new one for you. I'll de delete the Fibonacci and I'll, I'll just draw a new. Let's say I wanted to start at this low in 1904 and I wanted to draw a Fibonacci relationship tool. That is, I want to know if this is the length of wave one and this is wave two, Where, where's the typical targets for wave three? So I've listed out here for you what the most typical targets are on the waves within the wave principle. And it says here, wave threes are commonly at least 1.618 times the length of wave one. So when I drew that, I'll delete this line, that target came in right here right there, as if that would be probably the best spot for a wave three target. But, but as you can see, that that basically is right at that 1987 Black, Black Monday crash. Um, and there wasn't enough of a correction there for that to be a, a, a wave three. And so the wave three if measuring it from the 1903 low, what might be an extended tar target where the wave three would be 2.618 times the length of wave uh, of wave one back here. And that target comes in at 30,200 and we've come within just a few hundred Dow points in, on, in February of this year of striking that target. And so if that is a correct wave labeling, and I'll just put those labels in here uh, for, for now, and then we'll explore some different options. So that would be a one and a two 
in, in using this example. And since there was no wave three target, um, there was no wave big correction after a typical wave three target, the wave three may have been expen extended. So what we might be at right about now is a super cycle wave three top. Um, and price certainly came close enough um, for that to be a possibility. But I want to show you, um, and I'm, I'm just going to cast those labels aside for a second. Just throw them over here in a group. Um, um, a, a wave count that Robert Prechter has been publishing for decades. But I got to tell you, when you're talking about 100 years or 200 years worth of data, you know, a decade or two is actually a fairly small amount. So this, this is a scan I took from a, a book I have called Beautiful Pictures. It was published by Prechter back in, I think, 2001 or 2000. And it's suggesting that um, if you take the European data going back to 1780, and you, and you tag that on to the start of the um, Dow Jones Industrial Average that occurred about in the year 1900. You end up with this wave count of a 1, 2, 3 in, 20, in 1929, 4 in 1932, and then five waves up from there. And at the time, Prechter was thinking that 2000 top was the end of five waves up, going all the way back, you know, 200 years, 200 plus years. So this a wave count, as far as a long-term wave count, could still be correct. It's just that the top wasn't in yet. So let's explore that idea. And so <clears throat> that would mean that um, wave three at super cycle degree was at the 1929 top. Wave four was at the 1932 bottom. And we're, we're seeking, you know, we're looking for the end of a fifth wave up here. If that's correct, and we're going all the way back to the year, what was it, 1740, 1780? Well, he's got that starting at about five on the Dow, on a, on a Dow Jones Industrial Average, kind of worked backwards, a five. Uh, and really, if you're going to start at five, you know, why not start at um, zero? You know, if you, if, if, if everything, if we had five or, or the end of three waves up, a super cycle wave three at the 1929 roaring 20s high, and then a 90% a crash for a wave four right there, let's start the uh, analysis at 0 0.10, at 10 cents. 10 cents. So that would, that's a starting point I can't move to by just drawing it there. I have to manually put it there. And when I do that, um, and, and I look for, let's see, some Fibonacci relationships from there. And we look for a fifth wave up, <clears throat> fifth wave up. <clears throat> that is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, <clears throat> a typical 0.618 times the net traveled of one through three. That would put a, a typical target for the end of the fifth wave right there. Now let's see if I've got this thing. Yeah, and I'm using Similog scale for the price paint. And I'm also using Similog for the drawing tools. This is, a, this is an important point. Very few platforms allow you to tell the, the Fibonacci targets to also use Similog math. Now I'm using Trade Navigator by Genesis, but some really popular platforms like Thinkorswim won't do this. 
you can put the price candles in in Similog scale. But if you uh, draw uh, some Fibonacci targets, um, they will they will change and they will give you a completely different targets because the sim, this, the drawing tools in Tinkerswim only work in linear math. So it's very important to have a platform that uses Similog tools. You can see when I flip it to Similog. It is um, uh, it changes those targets, so we can play around with a starting point. What if what if the Dow did start at five dollars per share two hundred years ago? And let's say that uh, wave three was at the. Um, 1929 high and wave four at the 19 uh, to 32 low that would give us uh, this fifth wave up has just blown way higher than a typical 0.618 target and it's even blown up where the fifth wave up from from that low um, in 1932 is well past equality with waves one through three and we're nearing where the fifth wave up starting 1740 could be 45,000 in the Dow. That could be the target for super cycle wave five. And I find that to be a more credible um, idea where you start the Dow Jones Industrial Average 200 years ago by tacking on the European data at about five. And then you have a very extended fifth wave target up at about 45, 46,000 on the Dow. So those are really long-term targets that we really, um, it, they're interesting, but um, have little bearing to our daily trading. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get this thing, this chart sized back up and um, I'm going to go back to my main count where this was the end of a wave two. The reason I like the 1929 as the end of a wave two is because the crash going down into that 1929 low was a 90% crash. Um, <clears throat> And um, I've never seen a wave four at any on any chart that crashed ninety percent. Okay, so um, here's here's how we move forward from establishing. Let's say we want to go ahead with my main count and put a wave two there. Now we're looking for a five wave up structure from that low. It's pretty easy to see a one and a two and a three and a four, possibly a wave five here. We'll get to that in a second. And those these labels would be one degree less. So they would be the teal or cycle degree labels. So we're going to go one up from the 1929 low. So here's what, here's what I'm basically doing. I'm starting with the longest term chart and I'm, I'm establishing uh, a wave count that I can move forward in, in, into smaller time frame charts and use them there. So, so you start with a professional's long-term count and then you move to smaller time frames from there, adding smaller degree labels and Fibonacci targets as you go. So, um, now when you, when you just drawing labels in like I am, um, you want to also check on a fib on a, and see if they are meeting a typical Fibonacci targets, like a typical wave three. Wave threes are commonly at least one point six one eight times the length of wave one. So there, that is at this level right here in a similar chart. So that wave three was slightly short, but not much. It came pretty close. So that would be very likely a cycle degree wave three in 1966, a cycle degree wave four in 1974. And then we're looking for five waves up here within the fifth wave. And these would be primary degree labels. Um, 
So we're not worrying about anything prior to 1929 anymore. We're just looking at 1929 forward. And to the naked eye, what this looks like is potentially this. And this would be a super cycle wave three top, which as you will recall, was one of the first suggestions I made based on uh, this Fibonacci starting at, um, let's see, right here at the 1903 low, there's wave one, two, and there is your wave three, super cycle wave three target if it is 2.618 times length of wave one. So I'm going to leave that on the chart. Three equal one times 2.618. And when we move to uh, lower time frame charts, um, it'll still be there. That's right there. And I'm also going to color that. Yeah, it's colored. I want to color that um, uh, um, olive. So it's color coded when we move to, to smaller time frame charts. So now we have a wave count. And I'm, I'm placing the labels as if the top is in. I, I, and I want to remind you that that we fell about 600 Dow points in February short of that Fibonacci target. So I'm not going to assume that, the, oh, wow, we have a major top. I'm going to short this market right this second. And I'll get to that. But that, that brings me to this point here. Use an indicator-based methodology to confirm trend changes before jumping with both feet into a trend change. This is very important. And I'll show you how I do that here shortly. So now what we have is we have uh, some some labels. We have a, a target up here. We also, let's see, on this one, yeah, we have the wave three teal target right here. And that looks good. And there's one other target I want to establish, and that is where waves five in teal or cycle degree would might have a Fibonacci relationship with uh, the rest of the teal. So that's where it would be equal. And it really kind of overshot. Um, so I'm going to leave that, uh, the, let's see, cycle degree, that would be cycle degree or teal. The closest target we have on that would be equality target where wave five would be equal to the net traveled of one through three. Put these in teal. And I'm going to put one more enormously higher target on there just for grins. And so what we have now is we have a uh, target here back down a ways where um, the teal wave five would equal net travel to one through three. It would just simply equal it. So that would be um, an extended teal five. It shows you how this, what this shows you is how extended these waves are getting when you start looking at a long-term chart. So we'll take one last look at this, and we've got, we've established a couple of targets up here, a teal target, that would be a cycle degree target, very large degree, super cycle target, and I'm going to establish one more target up from this low here. And actually, I'm going to do that this way. I'm going to look for a burgundy or primary degree wave five target. And that would be where Burgundy wave five would be 0.618 times 
the net travel to Burgundy one through three. So that would be up from the 1974 low. So we have one more target we can put on before we move to the next chart. So this would be five equals one through three times 0.618. That is the most typical target for a fifth wave. It's amazing how often that works, that target does work. So now I'm going to take this chart and I'm going to uh, change it from a quarterly to a monthly chart. And once I'm in the monthly, you know, I'm, we're basically dealing with the 19, with the Y2K or, or uh, high to year 2000 and the 2009 low. And so this is a monthly chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we're going to start looking at the subdivisions on the way up here. So, and, and I want to make sure that all my targets are showing here. So we've got a couple of large degree targets. Um, the, we got a, another, the, the cycle degree target is still quite a bit lower. Then there's, then is, there's an enormously higher target on the cycle degree labels. at 102,000 on the Dow. <laughs> um, so now we're dealing with a monthly chart and we want to see how the internal waves count uh, moving up here. Now, when we get into the monthly chart, we might be able to, to utilize the MACD indicator to help us decide where some of these waves are. And um, so these waves are going to be Um, black or intermediate degree waves. Black or intermediate degree waves. There should be five intermediate black degree waves within the fifth wave in Burgundy on the way up. So, um, and based on the MACD indicator moving up strongly through this high right here, that just from experience on the monthly chart, is uh, likely the end of a third wave. So that third wave was in 2015, and then the fourth wave was likely in the first quarter of 2016. And then now we're gonna, uh, just for grins, let's, let's uh, continue to label this as a large degree top right there in February. Is there anything we can, else we can do Fibonacci wise on this um, um, monthly chart of the Dow right here? So I uh, guess there is, we can look for wave five to be to have a Fibonacci relationship. I'm going to draw that to the actual low there, uh, here. We have five to have a Fibonacci relationship with the net traveled of one through three. So wave five be equal to one through three times uh, 0.618. That's the most common target. So now we have, uh, we're developing a Fibonacci cluster for fifth wave up from the 2009 low. And now we can, uh, now that we have that target established, we can move to the weekly chart. You see what we're doing? We're, we're, we're just continuing to move to lower time frames. And we're looking for Fibonacci relationships that, that would prove our point of where we're putting our wave label. So now down here, we have, um, in the case of the Dow, it didn't make a new low in the first quarter of 2016. It's low actually occurred in uh, the third quarter of 2015. And now if we go um, back to my original key and, and, and we can go here for, for the key. So we've got black as intermediate degree we're going to go in uh, blue 
is going to be minor degree. And I have different point sizes on that. So we'll go back here. So we're going to look for five waves up from that low with internal Fibonacci relationships that support the case. So this is uh, I use the blue for minor and there's blue wave one, blue wave two. Pretty obvious uh, end of wave three there in the first quarter of 2018. And then we start getting into some, um, some of the nitty gritty of what's going on. Now that looks like a pretty standard expanded flat for wave four. The only problem with calling the February top uh, a really large degree top is, uh, in my opinion, the subdivisions on the way up on this wave here. It, it, it really looks like there was a triangle in here and uh, in Elliott wave triangle cannot appear alone in a wave two position. So this kind of looks like an ABC and you don't really that wouldn't be a suitable five wave structure into that high. Okay. And so now we're going to start dealing with a main count and an alternate count. So if the only, so the, the, the things, the items that support the February high as a really large Fibonacci high are, there are two large degree Fibonacci targets that are right there. One is a very large degree, super cycle degree potential for a wave three top right there. And the other is uh, that a wave five in black would, would have ended pretty much exactly where that, where that top was. But so the only problem we really have in, in being super confident in, in that being a very, very important wave three top, super cycle wave three top is the subdivisions of the price action moving forward. So what if this was a uh, expanding triangle? A, okay. And this, this is all in the book, A, B, C, D, E. And if that's an expanding triangle, then this could have been an only, uh, just a way four at the, at the March low. And then we would getting, be getting a five wave structure up to a new high. Um, and that would be the top. So, um, uh, the one problem with that wave count is that an expanding triangle is an ex a very, very rare um, structure. Very rare structure. You don't hardly ever see them. You know, they do, they, they have happened, but you know, it's, it's like a once in a, on, on this size of a time frame. like this is a, we're on a weekly chart. I mean, there might be one or two in the whole history of the, of the stock market. Um, so, the, so the rarity of the structure also supports the main count that we, we may have a large degree wave three top end. So if we're going to get a wave four next, then we, we want to refer back to, um, our resources and look for put, what, kind of um, corrective structures we could look for next. And um, there's zigzags, there's flats, there's several kinds of flats, there's triangles, and there is also something called combination correction. So actually, if we're going to be moving into a wave four here based on this wave count that we've been developing live, 
um, there's a number of possibilities. Uh, I can tell you on my site, I use a, a technique called Hearst cycle analysis, and it is expecting that we are going to get a correction uh, next. And let's just say it's going to be a, a wave four at super cycle degree that that correction is going to last until uh, the fourth quarter of 2023. That's when the next nine year cycle trough is. Because and I marry Hearst cycle analysis to all of my wave counts and I use computer generated Hearst uh, cycle analysis and that keeps me from applying any kind of bearish or bullish bias to my wave counts. You take just a regular wave counter, and um, if they aren't using any additional tools, uh, cycle tools, in my opinion, they are uh, leaving themselves open to allowing a bullish bias or a bearish bias to make their way into their wave counts. Uh, so, <clears throat> so we have a main and an alternate. The alternate is we might get uh, uh, one one last new high, and that would be the end of new high. But the main count is that we have a super cycle wave three top in, in place. So, what kind of structures can we have here? Well, if this was a five wave structure to the downside, and that's not a given, then we would get an A, B, C zigzag, but that wouldn't last long enough to get over to December, 2023. That might be just the first, um, an A, B, C zigzag might be the first um, leg of a longer lasting correction. We call those a combination correction. And, and if that was the case, that would, um, be way what we would label as a wave W and we're starting to get, in, get into some labeling that is um, a little more unusual, but it happens fairly commonly. So it's real important to, uh, to understand the idea of a combination correction. Combination corrections come in an Elliott wave when the, um, first corrective pattern doesn't last long enough to complete the degree of correction that you're expecting next. So if it started with an ABC zigzag, you can get an, an X wave zigzag to the upside after that. And then you would get a, a potentially a final z uh, zigzag to the downside. And this is what we call a double zigzag. So if the move down in, uh, that happened in, from, in very quickly from the February high to the March low was a five wave structure, then this would be and an A, we would be in, in a B wave now. And then we'd get a C wave to the downside. That is only one of the possible uh, structures that we could see. Um, and the reason that the reason it would have to be a zigzag to the downside would be that this internally subdivided as a five. When you go back to uh, the uh, definition of the corrections, um, zigzags subdivide internally as a five, three, five, and they're usually a sharp correction. A flat starts with a three, it's at a three, three, five. So what if we got a flat? So let's, if, first of all, if this was a three wave structure, the upside, it would be possible in a flat for it to make a new all time high here. Like that. 
would get a new all-time high. And then you could get uh, the combination correction down through December 2023 could be uh, starting with a flat that would have a slight new high inside of it. Based on what I've seen of the upward movement so far in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that has that count has potential of of, of, of the upward. And the reason is this upward movement so far. And then we're moving to a daily chart. So this, uh, I'm going to get rid of some of these uh, indicators down here. And I'd like to retain the MACD on this daily chart for this example. Even on the MACD, you can see a pattern. It's an A, B, C pattern. So this looks like an A, B, C now, so far, price has been moving sideways, and it hasn't broken down. Uh, it, it, it started to move down in uh, mid-April, um, but then we have this upward movement. Can, is, so I assume that some of the people in the room ha do have some Elliott Wave knowledge. Do any of you, can any of you describe this price action to the upside we've seen on the daily chart in the chat did, would you is there a word you would have that would describe what that price action lo looks like for you uh, people that have have some experience in la waves could be a wedge possibly an ending a, a, a diagonal the, the only pr problem with calling that a diagonal at this juncture would be you, you, you'd have to, uh, it, it would have to fit into the context. So um, I'm gonna draw some additional uh, labels here. Uh, in my opinion, the, the super aggressive 38% crash that occurred from mid-February through mid-March occurred in three waves. It was very likely corrective because I can't see um, A, B, C. Uh, I can't really see a suitable fifth wave structure down here. So I prefer to call it a, a C wave. But then uh, on the way up, it this looks like to me an A, B, C to the upside. Now, why, why can anyone tell me why I wouldn't label this as a one, two, and three, wave three? Anybody? And we, and we might want to go back to some of the original rules. Three is shorter than one. If that was a wave three, it would be shorter than one. Now, that is allowed. But wave three cannot be the shortest of waves one, three, or five in an impulse. So the fact, just the simple fact that this leg up here is shorter than this leg really points us to the likelihood that this upward movement is actually corrected. Yeah, um, there's a number of problems with it. Also, the wave A could have ended here, but I'll just put it here for this now. So the shortness of this leg up is troubling. And the word I was looking for on this upward movement here in the Dow Jones Industrial Average is corrective. It appears to be a corrective look. So we have a high back here. So could this be uh, three waves down? wave A and and then three waves up for wave B. Well, once again, we have the problem of this whole corrective pattern needs to last all the way to, uh, based on her cycle analysis, to uh, December of 2023. So if this is a, a super cycle wave three top and we're going to get a, a corrective pattern, um, yeah, it could start with an with an A, B, C, but if this was three waves down, that really kind of damages that idea. So what about the possibility of uh, this being 
three waves down for wave one. Is there is there is it possible to have a, a, a wave one that is only a three wave structure? Any experts in the room? When 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 would that be allowable? Where a wave one was just a three wave structure. In a diagonal, exactly. A leading diagonal or or an ending diagonal, either way. But in this case, since we're labeling it with a wave one, it would be um, a potential leading diagonal. And then these degree of labels would be wrong. And this might be an A, B, C for a wave two of a diagonal here. And um, diagonals, they, they eat up some time. They eat up some time. So if, if this move to the downside is going to start with a diagonal, it's, it's, um, and we're, we've already seen the end of wave one and the end of wave two here, and we'll eventually move down um, like this. Um, and that would be wave A. So the question is, how long is it going to take uh, for that structure to work its way through? So this B would be over here, and this would be a three, four, five. And so what I've basically just drawn for you is um, a roadmap that I'll show you in a minute that is real similar to what I've developed. And so I've started with the longest time frames, drew the Fibonacci's, um, and, and started putting the labels on, left the targets on as I moved through the different time frames. I moved from the longest time frames to the shortest time frames. And what I ended up with was something really similar to this roadmap right here that expects a leading diagonal for wave A and using Hearst cycle analysis, which I integrate into my work. There's an 18 month cycle trough due in August of 2021. There's that nine year cycle trough due in December of 2023. So we would start with a five wave diagonal dam, get a, a wave B to the upside and then the finish of the uh, large degree correction in December, 2023. Notice that in, no matter how my count works out on the longer term counts, still looking for that ABC corrective structure, no matter what my count is from a, a large degree Fibonacci target way up here. So that what I've hope, uh, hopefully I've done for you today, and I'm going to switch back to the quarterly chart is um, I've showed you the resources materials that you need to start counting waves and shown you an example of how do you move through the thought process of, de of developing a wave count. And um, one last thing I want to show you is that, um, uh, as you can see on my weekly chart, I'm expecting a top up in here, and so is Hearst. And a move down next to down into the late October, early November, and that would be a 40-week cycle trough due right there. So I'm looking for a move to the downside. Well, remember on my instructions, I said that you want to use an indicator-based methodology to confirm trend changes when trading. I'm almost finished here. I'm about running out of time. So I'm going to show you this one, just one more thing. I have these uh, trend charts that I've developed. On a daily chart, this is a trend following template, and I just started this um, a, a new service, and it's only twenty five bucks a month. So you go to my site and you hit subscriptions, and it's called Daily Trend Reports Plan. 
And we, every day we show a trend following, um, and this is an indicator based trend following system. that will keep you from, from jumping in too early on these project, you know, Elliott wave and Fibonacci project, uh, shows exact points. Fibonacci targets where a, a change would be expected. But that requires that your LA wave count be exactly correct and your Fibonacci target be the right one. Sometimes there's other um, uh, other Fibonacci targets that it may be trying to stretch to. But when you, uh, this daily trend reports plan, you hit the subscribe button there. There's the pricing. There's all my different levels of service. But every night for only 25 bucks, you get daily trend reports on 20 popular items. That's commodities currencies, bonds, the, the most popular stock market indices, lot, really a survey of the entire market. You also see algorithmic trade signals for only 25 a month. And by Elliott Wave Analysis on Bitcoin on that first level, that's a new service that I just started. And, um, and you get this chart on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P, Russell, NASDAQ, and everything. And it shows you a bunch of things, for instance, that right now they're still re really in a trendless environment. And the, the Dow is flirted with this lower trend line here. And, and but it's here the last two days, it's moving the upside and flirted with it and kind of broke the trend channel. But it's not, it's just not giving way yet. This chart would allow you to wait until you got a trend following signal in order to uh, trade a particular uh, idea that I had based on uh, Elliott Wave and Hearst. Um, very quickly, I'll show um, my offer uh, associated with today's presentation. And that is that um, if you go to my site and click on subscriptions and pick one of those subscriptions that you might be interested click on through and get to that pricing page. You can get your first month half price if you are a new subscriber, if you are a new subscriber and if you've never subscribed before. So this is not for people that have been subscribing with me um, prior. It's for So if you're a new person to my work and all you have to do is go on through the checkout process and use the coupon code at checkout of TRS dash dash. I'm sorry, TRS dash. August 2020, exactly like that with the caps, capitals and the, the minus sign and everything. That uh, coupon code will work on any level of service that I have. So if you went on through to check out and use that coupon code, you get half price on your first month on any of these levels of service. Each level of service of my site includes everything that's in, in, in all of the lower services. So as you progress through, you get everything in the first one. You know, like if you subscribe to pro pro plan, you get everything that's in that one, which includes the weekly webinars. That's the most popular plan, but also twice per week screenshots, daily trend reports. There's a ton of good information there. So that, um, um, if one of the uh, hosts wants to uh, jump back in and uh, and let me know if my time is up or if you have any questions or yeah yeah that was that was great okay so, thank you my so. pleasure thank you thank you for opening the the day for us yeah and uh, thanks for setting up this event uh, i hope it's a huge uh success it is uh, very educational for uh, lots of people there is a there is a question for you, Sid. If you just yeah, want to sure. take it up, where are we able to seek a good Hearst cycle analysis course or mentor? Uh, <clears throat> the um, if you um, Google Hearst cycles, uh, <clears throat> let me go to the, this. Bring over a page. If you Google Hearst Cycles, uh, and you'll you'll there's a website called Hearst Cycles, and my friend David Hickson developed Sentient Trader software, which is what I use. Um, and 
Uh, that's the most informative site on, on her cycles available on, on the internet. Uh, and you can also go to my site and um, down at the bottom of any page of my site, <clears throat> there you click on this sentient trader um, and that will take you to some uh, valuable information about her cycles. Uh, also in my resources under uh, guides, when you look at our chart notations, a guide for LA Wave subscribers, that document uh, does um, describe uh, the labeling system uh, somewhere in there. It, it's in there. Um, and and a, a quick uh, informational uh, outline of Hearst cycles and uh, what, what those mean. But yeah, David Hickson is, I think, the world's foremost expert on it. I use his software called Sentient Trader. And I also use a software program that is available at the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. Foundation for the Study of Cycles. So if I wanted to look at, for instance, um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I could click on a scanner right there. It'll look at uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and you can, and it'll tell you which cycles are the most powerful at the moment, including what the most the dominant cycle is at the moment, which is 166 days, and it'll show you that um, based on cycle analysis using the dominant cycle, we're expecting a top um, a, a price top of some kind in the Dow within the next few days. That's suggesting April or August 12th, and then a movement down through early November. So essentially a movement down into the election now is the way the cycles are working. And so when you uh, look at my site and you look at what I'm projecting on my daily chart on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I'm projecting downward movement down into a 40-week cycle trough based on two different cyclic methodologies. And so that's all built into my work. Uh, by the way, the cycle scanner at find out foundation for cycle or for the study of cycles is uh, it only costs hundred dollars a year to join that organization. And you would have access to this, I think uh, very valuable uh, as a member online cycle analysis tool, easily worth the price of admission. Thank you.